morning, good morning. Today we're gonna to talk about how to organize toddlers while you're also homeschooling older kids. This is something that I struggled with a lot when my kids were little. I have four children, they're all two years apart. So what that meant was when my older two were in early elementary school, I had one toddler and a baby or two toddlers at a time that I was trying to include and wrangle in addition to schooling the older kids. So I had three primary strategies for this that I'd love to share with you because I think maybe they'll help you too at your house. Um, first and foremost, having a schedule to your days. I don't know about you, but with lots of little kids, that's kind of the only way that I could cope and also enjoy life with them and we could all have fun. So my primary strategy with lots of children, with some that were younger, was to make sure that there was an order to our days. And this didn't have to mean, you know, an hour by hour Bible-like schedule, but just knowing that we were gonna get up and then we were going to have breakfast and then we were going to do some chores and then we were going to have some fun together and then we were going to read and then there was going to be a little block of seat time at the table and then there was going to be more play and then we were going to go outside and go for a walk and then there was going to be lunch and having a rhythm to our days where they knew that the next thing was coming and the next thing was going to be fun was really helpful in getting them to cooperate in the blocks where i needed a little more space with the older kids so that's one thing if you don't have a schedule of some sort Think about the patterns in your days that already exist and think about how you can be more intentional with those to build in the time that you need with your older kids. Second, uh, independent playtime. I had a mentor mom who really shared this one with me and it was so helpful. Uh, so when my kids were quite small from the time they could sort of crawl and enjoy exploring on their own, we started to build in a little block of time for them every day that we called independent playtime. And we kept special toys and special boxes for independent playtime that could not be accessed any other time of day, which made it more fun for them because they really looked forward to getting some time with their marble run or with their Bristol blocks or with whatever the thing was that they had chosen for that day. And they always got to choose because I really believe in agency and self-direction for kids. So we would put up the little mesh baby gate that was fun to lean against with your stuffed bunny and we would give them the toy that they had chosen. And it was always open to the room that we were in because we wanted to feel them included. It wanted them to feel included and in part of what was going on, but it allowed them a, a time and a space to do learning on their level with a toy that they enjoyed for, I aimed for 30 minutes. Now, when they were quite little, you know, two, and we were just beginning this process, uh, 15 minutes, was all we could get. And so then we would just stretch them by a minute or two a day or a week until I got that 30 minute block where they were really having fun. They weren't just living through it. They were having a good time by themselves in their rooms. That 30 minute block was gold because it allowed me to work with the other kids who were at the table on a writing um, lesson or on a math worksheet or something else that they were needing some of my time and attention for. So those little 30 minute blocks of time can buy you a lot of space. The final trick that I had was I kept a box on the kitchen table and inside of it were 12 to 20, depending on the, the week and the year, Ziploc bags full of really fun, cool little things that were learning tools for kids, but were also just fun adventures for them. So if I had somebody who was not coping super well with independent playtime because they were just tired that day or they had finished their independent playtime, but we weren't finished with our schoolwork yet, I would put that little person in the chair slide them up to the table and let them choose an activity bag. And these included things like stickers and paper, uh, safety scissors and origami to make confetti, lacing cards, wiki sticks, plasticine, all rubber stamps, all kinds of fun little things that would help them develop their habit of attention and also their gross and fine motor skills. And also they got to be at the table and do school with us together. I would set a timer once they chose a bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'd set a timer and I would give them 10 minutes with a particular bag and they knew they had to make that bag last for 10 minutes. And at the end of the 10 minutes, they could swap out the bag. And so in this way, I could usually get another 20, sometimes 30 minutes of time at the table where I could be working with the other kids while the youngest ones were participating, but contained and happy. So if I had a pattern to my days, if I leveraged the 30 minutes of, of video time that our kids got once a day, and I at, stacked that next to their independent play time, and we had 20 to 30 minutes of activity time at the table, there's an hour and a half. And an hour and a half is more than enough to get through the seat work that needs to be done with the older kids. So if you have tips for managing toddlers and integrating them into the learning process with older kids, I'd love to hear them. Drop them in the comments.